Yeah, so I'm uh, Leo from Graphistry, a uh, startup we had started, we spun out of Berkeley a couple of years ago, um, so uh, founder and CEO, whoop, guess we're going on autoplay here. And um, in this talk, I want to get folks uh, excited about GPUs and graphs, and then um, I'm going to go a little deeper into what we do in our, on our customer side, particularly kind of data science and especially security analytics, and give you a taste of what's going on there. Um, we normally ta target enterprise security, but also if you're doing your own kind of graph analysis or graph apps, you might be interested in our API, so um, come talk to me after. So at a, at a high level, um, what we're, um, Graphistry is looking at doing is basically unlocking the last maybe two, three decades of information visualization research, where if you kind of think about um, kind of in the movies, if you think about kind of the visual, like visual analytics that like, you know, you have your protagonist like swimming through data and like doing all this cool stuff. And then you think about like as a developer, like that dashboard you made last week, or if you're on analysis, like your like your um, Excel spreadsheet or whatever. It's just like somehow there's this like cognitive dissonance, right? And and so we're trying to um, kind of get us closer to there. I'm not. I don't want to like oversell, right? Um, one of the things that we found was kind of really important for enabling a lot of these uh, research papers that just kind of languished in academia is is the performance aspect. Like maybe it's a cool computational algorithm, or maybe you have this interaction that needs to go over a bunch of data. And our kind of big insight that kind of started it was basically we can connect um, the use of GPU and the browser to kind of get a lot of kind of just rendering stuff, and then we could connect that to a bunch of GPUs in the data center, which is now commodity, and kind of get in 100 milliseconds the full round trip, and that just enables a whole kind of new class of uh, software. The the thing is, like, you, to make that really work, um, you have to and make it usable. Like, that's actually really hard. And so my background is a, I'm a programming language designer, so I think a lot about abstractions, how we can put them together. Um, machine learning folks have been think, looking a lot at automation. And then kind of somewhere in between the two is the HCI and InfoViz, where you actually make it useful. So as I said, um, this is kind of what I described as general, but we focus on graphs. So have a little, when I, mean, when I say graph, I mean node link diagrams, kind of like, I think this was Facebook, um, a Facebook network. And uh, I realized there are a lot of um, startup founders, or a few maybe startup founders or aspiring startup founders, and um, I'd be happy to talk to, um, to folks like that afterwards. We kind of had an interesting journey where we were working on technology for a few years at Berkeley. Then we kind of did bootstrapping for a year, just trying to understand where the problem was. Then we started, um, we're actually today, we finally are kind of sustainable revenue. And it's been kind of a, a long road for us. So if anybody has questions about it, you know, always, you know, some folks helped us, um, I'd be happy to kind of help, um, help you. So, okay, um, security. So with all that high level stuff, let's actually go to a customer problem. Um, I have the more, like I have a security background, um, but the more, but. As soon as we got into the enterprise side of it, I just got a lot of sympathy. That's like really, that was kind of the new thing. And, and what, what these guys are facing is ridiculous. So they get about 100 million alerts a, uh, a day. And this, is, uh, this isn't log lines, but actual attack events. So maybe they have their virus scanners on each of the endpoints, on each server, on each phone. Maybe they have a firewall. That's, uh, maybe they have Cisco and like Juniper and all this stuff. Maybe they're getting external threat vendors, like email, and all kind of goes into something called a SIM. And so you get these 100 million, 200 million alerts a day, and pretty much nothing happens. Uh, for most of it, nothing happens. Maybe if you go on your priority 10s, you might go after, maybe you could try to do something with those, maybe you'll have one or 200,000 priority 10s, you'll try to do something. But the reality is 200,000 things a day, you're just gonna have a backlog pretty much starting day one. And so we're kind of like wondering even, like how do we, if, as soon as somebody starts taking action, like how do we kind of amplify their ability? And this is where uh, graphs come in. And so I'm gonna share something, kind of a, one of the POCs we did with our first customer here. Um, and they just gave us a random day from their attack, uh, from their attack alert, so this is kind of a day in the life of a security analyst. Um, a little more futuristic, but. Um, has anybody here ever used uh, Jupyter or IPython or MATLAB or anything? Like a few, so we got, it's actually really good. Wow, thumbs up. Um, so for those who haven't, what, what, how this works is basically you're a data scientist, you want to do some quick analysis, you might write some code, see some results, maybe write some comments, um, just mark down. Maybe sometimes when you write codes, instead of outputting text, you output a table or a visualization. This is really nice because you can share it with yourself. 
first of all. So like two weeks later, you can read it and know what's going on. And you can share it with others. And it's, it's very interactive, so it's cool. So in this case, what I wanted to show was um, we took about one working day of attack alerts. So in this case, we, uh, we ran a quick SQL statement. In this case, we're running it on, some, on HDFS. So we took the SIM, put it onto the Hadoop cluster. Um, nowadays, every, all the cool kids use Spark. So then we ran a Spark SQL query. Um, and if we just selected all of the attack alerts from that day, we got about 130 million things going on inside of the network. So that, OK, that's something. I don't know, I don't know what to do with it. So the, so the next step is, all right, let's look at all the priority 10 or severity 10. So it's a quick SQL statement. Um, and now we get a table. Though I was just talking about the future of visualization, lists and tables are great if you can distill the answer down to it. So if, if that makes sense, great. In this case, what we see, first of all, we get about, from those 100 million alerts, we have about 800,000 priority 10s or severity 10s. So that's 1% of the original data set, but it's still a little much. But we could, even from the table, learn a bit. So in this case, we see out of those 880,000, 840,000 were the firewall. So now I know something's happening, happened you know, yesterday on the firewall. So that's progress. But the thing is, I don't really know what happened on the firewall. And I'm not going to page through 800,000 like, row table or spreadsheet to figure that out. And so this is where graphs come in. And so instead of outputting our data set as a table, we output the data set as a graph. And we can show all of the day's priority tens in a kind of a dense way where we're not. The table kind of hid most of the results. And if you ever do like a bar chart, it always hides the results. When we do the graph, we actually show every single data point. Uh, and this is, so this is where the GPUs start coming in. Um, this is kind of like Google Maps on the client. Um, so you just very direct interactions. I'm going to, in, in this case, what we're saying is each computer or every device on the network is a, is a point. So here's one point. All this kind of big smear is actually a whole bunch of different devices on that, on that, on that company's uh, network. And if you think of any like Global 500, like that's just a lot of employees, contractors, servers, phones, all that stuff. That's all your points. And so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of ask, oh, to be very, very clear. And then if there's an alert, for example, on the firewall saying, this computer access that computer, and then an edge would be kind of an alert. In this case, it's something, one of those firewall, nobody could read this, it's one of those firewall alerts. Um, now we see how they kind of connect together. And high level, you think of it, here's my network of computers lit up by the attack activity. Why this is, um, and then what we're gonna do is um, let the computer do a bit of the thinking for us. So it's kind of automatically laying it out for us. If you're into machine learning, you can think of this as a dimensionality reduction going from whatever event space down to you know, X and Y. Um, and what's cool is now that I see all the data and I'm kind of seeing a bit of the structure, as an analyst, I could divide it into two types of things. There's some clear shape and pattern structure here. And there's some other one, maybe it's related, maybe it's not. And so I can kind of, as I'm responding to the day's priority tens, I can kind of split the road. And keep in mind, I had no idea about this data set when, when they gave it to us. Um, then, kind of going back into um, the graph world, I want to kind of point out, do the kind of the step two of that analysis. Um, and in this case, we did two things. We asked, OK, now that we know about all of the high priority kind of things, we decided to ask what else happened on those kind of uh, nodes of interest. I'm kind of glossing over a lot of that analysis just to because we're in 10 minutes. But now we're able to start using color coding, for example, could we bucket events by a category? And then I could just, when I do remediation, and say, all right, now I want to handle the yellow events, the blue events, green events, whatever. And so I was kind of, it became a much more palatable and manageable uh, workload. Because now it's actually, in a sense, it's a list, which is what we want. The other thing we were able to ask is now, this is where now we can start thinking like graphs, is what happened after? So there's this, so somebody's doing something inside of our corporate network. They're already in the firewall. Generally, most companies assume, basically assume breach. Um, and now we ask what, hap what events happened after. And what was cool here, I don't know if this is going to show up. If you watch my mouse kind of go across, I'm going to light up some green stuff. These are actually logons. So attackers in the network, they logged onto another layer of machines. Then there's actually two layers of machines. They log onto another layer of machines. And then they hit these blue events, and then um, kind of not, you won't be able to see it from here, but basically, thanks. Uh, these are um, 
data exfiltration. This is now it's data leaving the firewall. And at this point, like this may or may not actually be really what happened, but as an analyst, I can actually see it and I can form a hypothesis and I can go off and form my investigate and like actually maybe log into some boxes, look into logs in other systems, and I can kind of speak more intelligently about the actual behavior going on. Um, so it's like hypothesis generation, maybe some falsification and things like that. So jumping down, um, doo -doo. So I described, um, actually I wanna, I wanna highlight one last thing when we're looking at this, is basically today we can do about one million things in the browser and then more things in the, on, living on our server. Um, we're kind of targeting about 10 million for this year and then maybe 100 million for next year, maybe a billion, we'll see. But the, the key part of this is if you're doing web tech today, you're really happy if you have your visualization with maybe 1,000 or 10,000 things. So we're, we're, we think in magnitudes and like how do every year do we keep one-upping that, like going to the next magnitude, next magnitude. And by, using, by kind of connecting GPUs end-to-end, -end, we actually, this is now possible. So um, what I kind of want to leave you guys with is, I was, we're really excited by security. Um, however, we are, um, we are creating an API so folks doing other types of data sets uh, can try it out. So email me for an API key afterwards, it's just, it's just all on AWS. So some cool examples of this, um, We've done some social network stuff because we love, uh, we love security. We've done, we were looking at social networks for botnets, but if you do marketing sales, there might be something there. Um, I don't have it pictured here. Some folks are starting to do protein interaction, interaction networks for like genetics and synthetic biology. I don't really understand it, but if you do, great. Um, and then finally, machine learning has been really interesting. If you're doing like document analysis, stuff like that, um, you can actually connect the documents together, maybe like correlate features and then see how they connect together. Um, and then, I don't want to leave you, I'm not, I don't like being a magician, so really what is going on is we have a GPU cluster, we put, kind of like, imagine like a database about running on GPUs, and then if we run a filter, anything like that, that's running on the server, and then kind of like Netflix, we're gonna stream the result into the client. Um, and then instead of using JavaScript and kind of the normal slow CPU stuff, we drop all the data from the server directly onto the GPU and the client into WebGL. And this kind of, this, this lets, by skipping all that CPU stuff, we can, each, we can always guarantee that we're magnitudes above what normal technology does. Um, with that, I wanna say thank you. Um, hopefully it's a little inspiring. Um, and we are hiring in pretty much everywhere. So if you have any inkling of interest in this, just send us an email. Um, likewise, if you'd like to play with your own graph data um, and see your own graph data, um, let me get that. So info at graphistry. Oh, thanks. So are you providing any mechanism to integrate that third party software yes. integrate into your GPU cloud? Can let's you can you can you rephrase that? Sure. Let's say we wanted to integrate uh, some of the visualization stuff that you guys are offering with the appropriate compute power uh, into a product. Is that something uh, you guys support today? Uh, yeah, so we're built for embedding. So our two types of use cases are whether you're in a notebook and you want to embed a visualization in a notebook or you're a web developer building your own kind of advanced app. We, the, the main caveat here is we are really just focusing on graph data uh, right now. It's not inherent to what we do, but you know, startups got to focus. So yeah, so send me an email. So the two questions were uh, about, one was for their use cases, the other was um, kind of how do we, how do we scale? Um, so the, the use cases, like I said, marketing, sales, um, I, I don't really do a lot of that stuff myself, but we have a lot of kind of startups asking us about that. Like you wanna see customer networks, recommendation graphs, um, even uh, biology, like going into synthetic biology, they wanna see how proteins connect. Um, getting a lot of questions recently about fraud analysis or kind of text analysis where you wanna link stuff together to kind of give insight to your customers. Uh, in terms of scale, um, we're, uh, uh, wanna, I should clarify, our front end today is about what you see in the browser is about a million things, but let's say you have a filter that 
you're paging through different millions of things, like which thing. And so on the back end, a GPU could have about, one GPU will have about 24 gigabytes of RAM. And we don't need it, and we're, we're, our back end is basically a columnar store, if that makes any sense. And we only have to load in the columns that you're actually computing on. So this, and we plan to go multi-GPU, so um, my cost estimate was about six bucks will get you, I forgot, it was like two teraflops with, I don't know, two terabytes of on-GPU RAM per hour. So this stuff is, this stu this stuff is here. Cool. Thanks, guys.